So question seven, uh, you have a wood structure and the engineer says that the horizontal shear stress capacity of the two by twelves is lacking, but you don't trust her. Huh? I wonder who we could be talking about. Uh, as she has been on Facebook, as she's been on Facebook during the entire conversation, you decide to check for yourself. If the highest shear stress allowable for your Douglas fir larch is 180 PSI, then does this loading work? And so we have a beam here. It's uh, intriguingly symmetrically loaded. I love it. So tell me about it. Okay, so we need to think about what is the shear through this beam. So the maximum shear through a beam like this is going to be at its end span. Uh, so by seeing that it's symmetric, I'm, I'm just going to use my judgment and say that it has one kip of reaction at each end of the beam. And... From there, so that's the low, that's our shear. Uh, but now we have to figure out how much shear stress we have. So that's uh, going to be an equation that, unfortunately, in wood is a little different because of this first factor I'm going to put in front of you. But let me write out the whole thing first. So in wood, because you are dealing with a material that is looking at a horizontal shear, and it, because you're point of worst shear is actually when you go vertical through the section and you're trying to split apart those horizontal grains. And so that's where this three has, uh, it is a lot of differential equations in, in converting a vertical shear into a horizontal shear. So this is just a factor you have to remember in wood and it's specific only to wood, but then we're still going to do the normal load over area. And if this was on the actual exam, they would definitely give you that yeah. somewhere. It would, might be in the front of the exam, might be in the question somewhere, but that, that formula would yep. definitely be there. So now we're going to basically finish filling in the equation. So again, I told you that this was a constant and we know P, we know that that is one kip. And then we can figure out the area of a two by 12. You've got to go back to thinking about What's the so here's are, the but... whole important thing to remember. Uh, this is one of those things that used to get drilled into every architecture student uh, in the country, but I know has sort of slipped by a lot of folks these days. Um, a two by 12 is uh, it's nominally it's named a two by 12, but it's not two by 12. It is, in fact, one and a half by 11 and a quarter inches. So a one and a half by 11 and a quarter is what a two by 12 is. If we were talking about a two by four or a two by six, it would be one and a half by three and a half or one and a half by th uh, five and a half. But the eights, tens and twelves all go to the quarter. So uh, a two by eight is one and a half by seven and a quarter. Two by ten is one and a half by uh, nine and a quarter. And in this case, the two by twelve is one and a half by eleven and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of those things you just got to memorize them because uh, yeah. it'll show up in lots of places. Yep. So we know that our allowable shear stress is this 180, but I wrote the load down as one kip. So we do have to multiply by that thousand pounds per kip to get our answer. When you do the math here, you get 89 PSI. And when you compare it to the 180, you are actually under. So the two by 12s actually have enough shear capacity. So look, there you go. All right. 